Aloha everyone, Lisa here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me or haven't been with me before, welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you. And um, my name is Lisa Oreg, and I'm actually the owner of Upside Down Pilates and Nourishment. Um, I'm also the creator of the Joint Pain Eliminator Program. And this is where I help women eliminate joint pain so that they can get back to living the active, amazing life that they love that's been disturbed by their joint pain. So what are we going to do today for our live? As promised, we're going to dig into heavy metals. How do our heavy metals, the microbiome, and joint pain relate to each other? Right, which they do, but how does that happen? Does heavy metal toxicity create joint pain? You uh, can think about that for a moment, but probably yes, if we're talking about it today. This is part of phase one in my joint pain eliminator program. So in phase one, we go through a discovery phase and we're trying to figure out what's going on here, what's the underlying cause of a lot of our issues. And heavy metals definitely can be one of these drivers that we have with joint pain problems. So if you haven't already, take a moment, subscribe to the channel. Um, you can click the little bell. That'll give you a notification every time I upload a video. I do on I do all overall wellness, lifestyle, and health things. Um, I do a lot of work with neuromuscular re-education and Pilates, teaching you all how to exercise efficiently and properly. But then also we go into all these other things with the microbiome, focusing on joint pain and how we can work to become more healthy and joint pain free. So those are all things that we work with on the channel. You can check me out at Instagram, Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, you name it, I'm probably there. So go looking for me. There's also in on the Upside Down Pilates and Nourishment YouTube page, up in the right, there's a bunch of little um, icons you can click on to get to those places. So what does the microbiome have to do with heavy metal toxicity? A whole heck of a lot. How does the microbiome dictate our ability to detox heavy metals? It completely dictates how we detox heavy metals. And then today I'm going to talk about what happened to me um, over the past six months uh, and how heavy metals play into that. We're really going to dig into my story. And the purpose of me sharing what happened isn't so that people feel sorry for me because it's been really difficult. But Anytime I go through a problem, I try and make it beneficial for everyone. So what I have learned over the past six months about heavy metals and the microbiome and uh, how disruptive heavy metals are to the microbiome is pretty insane. And a lot of it, and I speak with a lot of you guys about this, unless you've experienced it, you'd never believe <laughs> what happened happened. Um, so that is why I'm sharing my story, as well as many people keep asking me what's going on, and I try and explain it. But if you don't look at the body as um, I do, and how I look at the human body is physiologically, we are a microbiome. We're a big host for parasites, bacteria, fungus, and yeasts. And either we've got positive parasites, bacteria, fungus, and yeast that are helping us be healthy. We've got negative ones that are sucking the life out of us. Um, and heavy metals really create an environment for the bad bugs to come in and live. Um, so trying to explain it is difficult. So if you're here trying to understand what's been wrong with me, um, that's why I haven't really gone into it, not because I don't want to share, but because it's difficult for people who don't see the body that way to understand because it's a very um, huge paradigm shift for most people to start looking at health as how our body is healthy through our microbiome rather than, um, I don't know, I guess pathogens being bad things. Pathogens are bad things, but um, <laughs> you need a balance of good bugs. Um, so that the bad bugs don't take over. And if you don't have enough good bugs, then the bad bugs will take over. Okay, enough about that. So let's dig into our heavy metals. So what the heck are heavy metals? Some of this I have written, and I'm just going to read it so I can be clear. And some of it, I just have questions that I'm going to go off the cuff and try and answer for you. So what are heavy metals? 
Heavy metals are a group of minerals with no known physiological or biological function in the human body. And they are known to be extraordinary harm, extraordinarily harmful to us. I can attest to that. There's zero, I, we should not be having heavy metals in our body. Let's just put it this way. If, if you are a proponent of putting heavy metals into your body for whatever reason, um, I encourage you to keep watching so you can learn how detrimental these things are to us, even in extraordinarily minuscule amounts. So heavy metals are naturally occurring, but the Industrial Revolution has exposed us to increasing amounts of heavy metals. They are a major, major, major cause of illness, aging, and genetic defects. And I'm going to go into how that is. Um, everyone really does have toxic metals in their tissues, including newborn babies at this point. And we know that our toxic world is just off the charts at this point. Um, so that shouldn't be shocking to anyone. But yes, newborn babies have toxic metals in their system. They've been handed to them by their mothers and their fathers. Um, the body uses what it can when it needs as minerals. So highly toxic minerals, AKA heavy metals, can be used in place of mineral deficiencies if needed. So calcium in the bone can be replaced by lead. So if you go um, on to, oh, this is good. Typically, if a mineral and metal are in the same column on the periodic table, if you remember back to chemistry, there's this big periodic table, and then there'll be different lines, and you'll have lead, and then in that same line, you'll have calcium. Okay, so typically, if a mineral and metal are in the same column on the periodic table, they have similar properties and can replace each other as on their binding sites. So mineral deficiencies themselves can increase the buildup of toxic metals. And this is why, one of the reasons why when I work with people, I have them do um, uh, hair tissue mineral analysis. If you've worked with me, we do that because we're looking at the minerals, but then we have to look at the patterns of the minerals to see if there may be some heavy metals that are pushing the minerals out of your body. Um, this is one of the things and one of the reasons we use um, HTMA or I use HTMA to help people transform their health, health. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So let's go through here. Where are heavy metals found in our environment and lifestyle? So they're naturally occurring in the world, but now we have kind of taken it to the extreme and we literally inject ourselves and implant ourselves with heavy metals um, as part of our lifestyle choices. So one of the big ways is through amalgam fillings and other dental work like orthodontists, dentics, so like retainers and braces and things like that. They're full of heavy metals. And when you have amalgam fillings, um, the silver fillings, they're full of mercury. So you're literally implanting mercury into your teeth. Okay. Injections for health prevention purposes. Um, most of these types of injections uh, contain aluminum or mercury in the form of thermosol. Um, they may contain one or the other, but oftentimes they actually contain both. So we literally inject heavy metals into our bloodstream. Makeup. So this is a big one. A lot of our um, preparations for looking beautiful and staying beautiful um, contain heavy metals. So there's lead in like lipstick. And so you're eating lead all day long. There's lead in whitening agents that are in things like ivory soap. So um, it's kind of everywhere in the health in, or in the beauty industry. So you really have to look at the makeup that you're using and make sure it does not contain heavy metals because it will go straight through your skin. All right. Uh, cookware. This is a huge one. All right. Things like Corel. The painting on the Corel, it has different heavy metals, particularly lead in it. I know on Pyrex, the red paint on like Pyrex is full of lead. Um, crock pots, this is something that was really interesting to me. Crock pot, the paint on the inside of crock pots has lead in it. So when I started with GAPS, I was using a, which is the gut and psychology and gut and physiology syndrome. Um, way to rebuild your microbiome. That's what GAPS is. I was using a crock pot to make my bra. 
And I don't know, maybe a year or two into using this crock pot to slow cook my broth, I found out there was lead in the paint. So I'd literally been cooking lead into my body while trying to recover from heavy metal toxicity. So um, actually in my Amazon store, I ha now have a stone crock pot that I use. So you can go into my Amazon store and see the slow cooker that I use. Um, that's stone that does not have lead in it, thank goodness. Um, copper pots. Um, cast iron, a lot of, just a lot of stuff we use for our cookware has heavy metals in it. Food. Oh, goodness gracious, there's lead in organic baby food. Uh, recently, probably back in July, probably, yeah, maybe last July, June or July, there's a study that came out. High-end organic baby food, some of these brands have over 150 times the allowed amount of lead in them. So here we are trying to do something to keep our babies happy and healthy, and we're giving them lead toxicity, which can lead to one of the things, learning disabilities. Great. Arsenic. Oh my goodness, arsenic is in rice. So if you eat a lot of rice, like people here in Hawaii do, um, you're being loaded with arsenic unless you're looking for rice that specifically doesn't have arsenic in it. And that has been reflected in a lot of the testing that I've done with the people here that eat a lot of rice. It'll come back with uh, literally arsenic coming out of their hair. So pipes, lead pipes, copper pipes. So if you are in, um, there is still lead and copper pipes being used. And if you're in a building that has, or a home that has lead or copper pipes, you're drinking lead or copper straight through, um, when you're drinking your water, all right? Computers and other technology things like our keyboards, they have heavy metals like mercury in them. So you're typing on your keyboard and you're getting mercury coming through into your hands, all right? Halogen lights, um, they emit mercury. And even supplements, you have to be very careful. That's why when I work with people, I tell them I've picked these supplements, I've made sure that they're not containing things that they shouldn't contain. Things like curcumin, many a different supplements have actually been found to have lead amongst other heavy metals in them. So you're trying to reduce inflammation, but giving yourself um, heavy metal toxicity at the same time. And this is just some of them. Okay, these are like the major ones that off the top of my head I can jot down. Heavy metals are basically everywhere. So I want to go into a little bit about now, if you have any questions, make sure to type it up in the chat. Um, I will definitely answer them. But I want to go into a little bit about the harms that heavy metals can do when they get into our body. Okay. So like I said, lead, it is one of the leading things that causes learning disabilities. This is very well known. Also, um, it has been found to... Um, lead to rage. So uh, very um, maybe abusive individuals have been found to have high levels of lead in their body. All right. Aluminum, it's very well known that aluminum toxicity leads to Alzheimer's and dementia. In fact, aluminum has been found in the brains of Alzheimer's and dementia patients. Mercury is huge. And like I said, mercury is in amalgam fillings. So you'll know the Mad Hatter and Mad Hatter's disease from Alice in Wonderland. So that's mercury toxicity. So um, this, in, this affects the brain, it affects the lungs, um, and it can affect various systems like the nervous system, stomach, kidneys, skin, the thyroid, breasts, muscles, liver, adrenal glands, testes, and prostate. These can all be negatively affected by mercury and mercury toxicity that's found in things like amalgam fillings or these injections that get that are supposed to promote health. So, um, yeah. And the other thing with mercury is it it adjusts it affects people's personality tremendously. Um, they're very aggressive um, and um, manipulative and can you know, not because they're bad people, but just they have the mercury toxicity and it makes it very difficult for them. Um, yeah, their brain's on fire. And so they become very angry people. All right, let's move on now. So those are some of the problems. That's And that's just a few of the problems. There's a lot of other problems that we're actually going to get into, but that's some off the top of the head, off the 
very, you know, very top here. Now, the idea is that doesn't our body eliminate them? So as I alluded to earlier, um, if you have mineral deficiencies, your body will actually use these heavy metals in place of the minerals. So that's one way that our body doesn't eliminate them. They actually take them in and use them. So if you don't have enough calcium in your body, but you do have lead available, your body will go, oh, lead, and then store it in your bones. So that is how that works. As well as um, if your detoxification pathways, your gut microbiome, your liver, your gallbladder, your kidneys, all of these things are clogged or not working properly, then these heavy metals are not excreted. They're stored. They can be stored in our joints. They can be stored in our thyroid. They can be stored anywhere that you might find autoimmune conditions. Um, and your body is then going in and attacking these heavy metals that have attached onto our tissues because they shouldn't be there. And I talk about that in my book, From Sick to Sexy, that you can get on Amazon if you want more detail on that. So ideally, in a properly healthy body, we have all the minerals we need. Our gut microbiome is working perfectly, and we're able to eliminate you know, minuscule or a little bit if we run into contact with these heavy metals. Um, but if it's not working properly, then our body's going to take them in and they will become part of us. So how do these heavy metals change our microbiome? And this is what I have learned over the past six months that I didn't know before. <laughs> so I knew all that other stuff. But when we have heavy metal toxicity for whatever reason it is, um, and those metals get stored in our body. Parasites, bad parasites, bacteria, fungus, and yeasts are then attracted to those heavy metals. They can sense if we're around them, like in our environment or within our family, they can sense that we have heavy metals. And so these bad bugs will be attracted to us and they will start living inside of us and eating off from these heavy metals. And the bugs that are attracted to toxic heavy metal elements are in general toxic bad bugs that create other problems. So having the heavy metals as part of our body then creates our body as a toxic environment and it encourages toxic bugs to create a toxic microbiome. I did not realize that before. And I very much so realize that now. So um, having heavy metals in your body can permanently damage your entire body's ecosystem and make it toxic. Um, yeah. So again, for whatever reason, you have heavy metals in your body and then bad bugs, bad bacteria, bad parasites, bad fungus, bad yeast are able to live here. And one of the things that they do is they actually protect us because they are feeding off from these heavy metals. And so it keeps the heavy metals from actually um, killing us because that's, you know, if you have arsenic poisoning, you're, you're going to die. If you have too much mercury, you're gonna die. Like these heavy metals will kill us. Um, so they eat them so that we don't die from heavy metal toxicity and they keep them away from our vital organs in some cases. But then we get an overgrowth of these bad bacteria, right? So then we're living in a body that is basically toxic, full of toxic bugs and, and we have a toxic microbiome just from the heavy metals being present. But all these things are intertwined. So it's not which came first, the chicken or the egg. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this, and then it turns into this big, scary mess, which my teacher, Reed Davis, calls metabolic chaos. And I think that's a perfect description of what goes on here. So I'm going to go into now an explanation um, on how the microbiome helps with our detoxification process, which is what should be pulling our heavy metals out that may or may not be pulling them out um, in one regard. 
So most people think of our detoxification process coming through our liver and our gallbladder and our kidneys and our skin, but all of that starts with our microbiome in our gut. And the majority of people don't realize that. So they have one of the problems that happens with people who are trying to detoxify from heavy metals is they will clean out their liver, clean out their gallbladder, they'll do all sorts of things to clean things out, but they don't go back and rebalance the microbiome. And it's just not going to work unless you start with your gut. So this is a big detox problem. And oftentimes people will start detoxing things and pulling things out of their body, including heavy metals, but they haven't rebalanced their gut and so their body can't handle it and they actually end up more sick than they were before they started all the detox processes. And I have actually had a couple people recently um, that have contacted me that have done this um, and it's, it's not pleasant. Don't worry, everything can be figured out, but it, it is very unpleasant. So let's go into the microbiome and how it helps with our detox processes, okay? How does the microbiome help with detox process of heavy metals and pretty much everything? Um, a damaged gut blocks our body's ability to properly detox, okay? And unfortunately, this is a double-edged sword with the microbiome. Um, if the microbiome isn't able to properly detox, not only is it not able to properly detox, but then it starts adding in more toxicity because the microbiome becomes toxic. And so it's a two-way street. It has jobs that it's supposed to do to detox us, and it's not doing those. And at the same time, it then becomes more toxic with bad bugs and leaking out toxins into our bloodstream um, just from the bad bugs, okay? So number one, a healthy gut is a pinnacle part of our detox system. And that is something that we really need to understand. The healthy gut, the gut microbiome is the beginning stage of our detoxification process. We often think that our liver, our gallbladder, and our kidneys, our skin um, is what is our detox, but the gut is the center of all of that process. If your gut is imbalanced, if it's leaky, if it's compromised, you are not able to detox toxins well. And this is in all regards of all toxins, not just heavy metals, but definitely heavy metals um, from lead that we've talked about all the way to BPAs or glyphosate. All right, it's gonna impair all those um, processes. Number two, your gut is either your worst enemy or your best friend, okay? The big problem is if the gut is broken, not only does it not do its detoxification job, but it also adds to the toxic toxicity of your toxic load. Um, and that toxic load is actually almost doubled because when your gut is broken, we're gonna get into a little bit more of the processes of how that happens. Number three, when your gut is working properly, it creates tremendously wonderful, vibrant health because it has a lot of jobs that it's supposed to do to keep you healthy. But when it is broken, it is the driver and creates chronic illness in the same way that it has jobs to keep us healthy, not only in detox, but with hormones and with everything else, but it's not doing those jobs. And then it's creating toxicity, which it becomes a burden on our system. Okay. Now let's go into the mechanisms of how a dysfunctional gut makes us more toxic. So how does a dysfunctional gut increase our toxic load? Well, number one, it is the first filter of toxins. So it is the first thing that sees the toxins coming in and deals with them. So prior to going to the liver, the gut microbiome filters out some, a lot of the garbage so that it doesn't actually get to the liver. So what actually ends up in the liver is less toxic. If you have a dysbiotic gut, There'll be an overgrowth of bad bugs, pathogens, bad yeasts, opportunistic bacterias, 
um, the wrong kinds that cause problems for us. And this means that our gut is leaky. And it means that we have a lot of inflammation. And it, if the gut is not filtering out our bad bugs, um, or our bad bugs, our toxins, our bad substances that may come in through our diet and lifestyle, they go straight to the liver. And then the liver has an extra load and it gets all clogged up. And if our liver is clogged up and stressed out, then we're a mess. We're clogged up and, and stressed out. Number two, the dysfunctional microbiome converts compounds into even more toxigenic compounds. So you get things coming in that are toxic and then your microbiome takes them. And if it's bad bugs, it will convert them and make them even more toxic. So this is definitely in regards to heavy metals. So some bad bugs can take heavy metals um, and convert them into compounds that are even more toxic than the heavy metals were. So this is a problem. Um, then they go straight to the liver. And then your liver has to deal with these even more toxic compounds from these already toxic heavy metals. Yeah, they can make these toxic compounds by metabolizing them and make them carcinogenic. So they can, um, in any kinds of toxicity, they can make them more toxic and then also carcinogenic to our system. Okay, number three, bad bugs produce toxins themselves like lipo lipopolysaccharides, we've talk about, talked about those, um, and toxic neurotransmitters that create things like anxiety and depression. So these bad bugs that we have living in our gut that maybe got started living there because we have heavy metal toxicity, those bad bugs create bad substances and um, wreak havoc on our body and go straight to our liver and clog up our liver. Number four. It creates inflammation in our gut lining, all right? So now you can see, if you've been following me, we're starting to move into leaky gut, all right? This inflammation in the gut lining, it damages, the inflammation is going to damage our tissues and make us more and more um, leaky in our gut. So the more dysbiosis you have, the more it's going to damage our tissues and the more leaky our gut is going to be. Um, then we've got things going through our intestinal tract into our bloodstream, and this is going to alert our immune system that we have all these bad things coming through and have our immune system start overreacting or not even overreacting, but just reacting because we've got all this stuff coming in that shouldn't be there. Um, and they go all throughout our body, and then it creates an overall systemic inflammation. And we all know that that is chronic illness. Um, for those of you who don't know, 50% uh, of the population of the United States has a chronic illness. That's not normal. That, uh, that's, not, <laughs> that's not good. It is normal, but that is not healthy. So, yeah, this is bad. And this is very serious. So I shouldn't laugh about it. Number five, a health gut makes enzymes to keep us healthy and detoxifying properly. This is going to include those, the methylation process enzymes and the hydroxylation enzymes. These are the um, enzymes that are supposed to help us detox. So if it's damaged, an unhealthy gut, they're not making the enzymes. So if you're not making the enzymes, you're not methylating or hydroxylating or all those other processes that you should be doing for detoxification properly. So let me put that all together. In summary, you increase your toxic load uh, by having a dysbiotic gut and by having a compromised um, microbiome in your gut. You increase your toxic load. You are not doing the initial screening of toxins. You're full of systemic inflammation. You're not making the proper enzymes needed to detoxify yourself. So things like IBS, IBD, constipation, diarrhea, anxiety, depression, sleep issues, skin issues, joint pain, autoimmune conditions. These things are all signs of a dysfunctional gut leading to an inability to detox. And those all can be sourced by heavy metals, all right? Whether they got there 
uh, because we put them into our body um, or they came here because our body was already compromised. Um, yeah. So now that's what a unhealthy gut looks like. How does a healthy gut help us detox? So now we're going to look at what it does, what our gut microbiome does for us if it is in a healthy state. So number one, it helps us maintain our healthy gut lining. So this is the epithelial cells being nice and tight and closed in our uh, gut lining, the mucosal layer being nice and thick and strong, keeping bad bugs out. This healthy gut lining is actually a physical barrier for the toxins, okay, keeping them out of our bloodstream and out of our liver. The more mucus we have in our mucosal layer, the more our body is going to be able to trap the toxins and then just take them right out of the system into our stool. So then it's not going to go to our liver. It's not going to go to our gallbladder, our kidneys, and our, it's going to keep our immune system calm by having it that way. How do we keep that mucosal layer healthy? I have a few things that um, help to build a healthy mucosal layer for you. Gelatinous broth and meat stock. Uh, and then a product called Mega Mucosa actually helps to build that healthy gut layer. And then having healthy bugs and a balanced microbiome, um, the, our healthy microbiome also creates short-chain fatty acids, which I don't actually think I talk about in this talk. But those short-chain fatty acids like butyrate, proportionate, um, they help to keep our epithelial cells nice and closed. And that is going to come from our fermented foods, from our omega spore biotic and our omega prebiotic. Those are the basic things that help to, are going to help us keep our mucosal layer nice and strong and closed and built together. And then the good bacteria in and the bad bacteria out. The second thing a healthy gut microbiomes does is it screens for toxins and breaks toxins down from toxic to non-toxic compounds. So if we ingest something that is toxic or get something like heavy metals inside our body that are toxic, there are actually bugs that will go in and take the toxicity and then change it to be non-toxic. And then hopefully it won't even get to the liver because it's just going to be sloughed off as our mucosal layer sloughs off. All right. Now, an example of this is going to be, for example, glyphosate. We know that it disrupts our microbiome, but there, the bacillus spores have been shown to actually break down glyphosate before it, you know, takes it out through our stool. So bacillus spores are found in things like megaspore, HU58, and Restore Flora. Um, and I'm just giving you some ideas of things that I use to help with these things. Now, there are are some good bugs that actually can take heavy metals, they can bind to them and take them out of the body. And there's actually a new product that just came out. It is Lactoplantibacillus plantarum. That is the um, bacteria that will bind to arsenic, lead, and cadmium when it comes into your gut and take it out. And it looks, I actually have it right here that I brought up so that you can see it, all right? I'm not trying to make a commercial here, but what it gives you an idea of how much or how powerful these um, bacteria are. This is one specific species. So this type of thing isn't going to, you know, pull lead out of your bones and take it out. That's a different process. But this type of thing, taking that on a daily basis, if you're getting arsenic with your rice or lead with your baby food, it's going to bind those things up um, and take them out in your stool so it doesn't end up going through your body. But again, it's not like a, a chelator that's going to pull it out of your joints or your bones or other places that the uh, toxicity might be stored. So that is something that does that. Number three, when the good bugs see toxins coming in, they tell your detoxification system to get ready to go because we've got some toxins coming in. So specifically, the phase one system will kick into high gear. Now, it also happens with phase two and phase three. So what happens is it starts to tell your body to upregulate the enzymes that um, help you do the methylate, methylation and 
hydroxylation in phase two and phase three of detox. So if you don't have your body signaling that there's a problem coming because you don't have these good bugs to do that, um, you know, it's not going to happen. And so your detox system isn't going to be rare and ready to go for the invaders. Um, and that is the same thing. I'm not doing a talk about the immune system right now, but that is the same way that 70 to 80 percent of our immune system is actually in our gut, which can be destroyed by heavy metal toxicity. <laughs> I'll get you all freaked out here, and then you'll all be wanting to drink broth and eat fermented foods, hopefully. Okay, now the last one I'm going to talk about here is our microbiome controls the circulation between the gut and the liver through the... Um, portal vein, the hepatic portal vein. So it can actually take toxins coming in and bind them and change them and neutralize them so that when they send the toxins off to the liver through the portal vein, they're not as toxic as when they came in. So if it, they can't take it out through the stool, they'll send it on through the vein to the liver and then it'll be much less difficult for the liver to be able to handle them. So this is why having a good, strong microbiome, especially before you're going to do any sort of chelation process for heavy metals, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute, um, rare and, and ready to go. So when I meet someone who has heavy metal toxicity and we need to do that, we do not start with pulling the metals out. We start with balancing their minerals. Oftentimes when you start to balance your minerals um, and then balance your microbiome, the metals will just leave. You don't even have to go through that process unless you're at a really far state. Then you actually do have to start pulling the metals out and rebalancing the microbiome after the metals are out. Okay, so that's all of that. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments and I will be sure to address them as much as I can. Now, can you test for heavy metals? Yes, you can, but it's actually really kind of tricky. Why? Because the metals will get stored in our tissues. So when we do some sort of test, we're testing for what is inside of things that come out of our body, okay? But if the metals are stored in our bones, it's not coming out of our body. If the metals are stored in our muscles or our organs, like our thyroid or something like that, it's not going to come out, right? They're stored in there and they're staying in there. But the tests that we do have are blood. So when you do a blood test, you're going to see if you have acute toxicity. So if you just had it in your system and it's in your blood. Um, so this would be something that you would have if you have a chronic exposure to it or an acute exposure to it. Urine. If you're passing it out through your kidneys and the metal, the metal is coming out through your, um, your urine, it'll show up in there. Stool. If you're able to bind it up and take it out through your stool and it's not going through into your bloodstream, then it'll come out in your stool. Hair tissue mineral analysis. The little bit that we take, we take about an inch off the very tips of our head, we can see how much over the past three months, you can look at what minerals are coming out through your hair and then what heavy metals are coming out through your hair. So if you have metals coming out, very easily and you're able to detoxify things and you're not all plugged up, you will see heavy metal toxicity reflected in those tests. It is very tricky though um, because just because it's not coming out through the test does not mean it's not stored in your tissues. So people do a lot of things to try and pull it out. I don't do that because I think it is it, it can backfire on you. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about the backfiring um, in a moment. So <clears throat> the one thing that you can do to look and see if you have heavy metal toxicity is if you look at your face and you look and see, I don't know if you can see very good here, but there'll be these lines, these very deep lines. Now I'm starting, you're thinking, oh, you're just getting older. I am. I am 45, but these are not just aging lines. These are heavy metal lines, all right? They'll also show up in your hands. If you, and you'll look at like guys who do a lot of work 
um, like manual work, working with metal things, cars. Uh, my my dad was a, a welder and then also a sandblaster on the railroad. Um, you'll see these lines. That's all metal. All right. So that's one of the easiest ways to see if it's there. It's actually easier to see that way um, than through these tests. The tests can be very helpful because if you are pulling them out, you can see exactly which ones are there and that gives you a clue. Um, but even if it comes back in the test that it's low, that doesn't mean it's not there. That means it's there and there's probably more of it somewhere else. Even babies nowadays have heavy metals in their system, like I said earlier. Okay, so yes, you can test for heavy metals. Now, I want to go through um, a moment and just remind you, we talked about this last week when we talked about the weight, what causes the microbiome imbalance, because we talked about all the different ways that our detox pathways can be damaged. So what can cause this micro imbalance, microbiome imb imbalance in our gut that can cause um, us not to be able to detox things properly? And I'm just going to go through quickly antibiotics, all right, so that when you take antibiotics, you wipe out your gut microbiome. Um, glyphosate, glyphosate was originally patented as an antibiotic, so everything that is in gly glyphosate, along with other pesticides, but definitely gly glyphosate, kills off your microbiome. Your food choices impact um, what is in your microbiome. So what you're eating, if you're eating sugar and processed carbohydrates out of packages, or if you're eating a diet of pasture-raised meats and some fishes and chickens, along with healthy vegetables and tubers and fruits that are not too high in um, fructose, those things will give you an entirely different microbiome. All right, stress. We talked about it last week. Stress kills the good bugs. It actually, the bad bugs that may be living there that are not um, over dominant at the moment, they sit around and they wait for you to get stressed out, right? We talked about this. And then when they sense those stress hormones, the cortisol rising, they wake up and they say, our person is stressed out. Let's take over. Sleep lack of sleep, I should say, lack of sleep destroys your microbiome, lack of exercise or movement. I can, I, you know, I will do an episode about how exercising outside with a dog, <laughs> that in itself, go running outside with your dog, that will make your microbiome better just by doing that. Lack of sunshine. Sunshine does, it gives us vitamin D, but there's all these other components that our body needs sunshine, just like some plants need some sunshine, more sunshine, less sunshine. Humans are just like plants. We need our sunshine. Heavy metals, that's what we're talking about today. So like we said, heavy metals get into our system for whatever reason. They stay there. They create a toxic body. And then toxic bugs are attracted to our toxic body. Horrible. And then our pharmaceuticals. Um, I could give a whole talk on this, but I won't do it on this platform. Um, but pharmaceuticals just, especially long-term pharmaceuticals, they just wipe out the good bugs, my dear friends, and let the bad bugs come in. Okay. So I think I covered all of that with heavy metals. If you have any questions about heavy metals, oh yes, what do we do to get rid of heavy metals? I'm going to talk about that right now. And I'm going to talk about that through talking about my story. So some of you may have heard of like chelating heavy metals. And there's a whole bunch of different things that do this. And I'm not going to tell you how to do it because I would not go at it on your own. I would work with someone who knows what they're doing because it can go wrong. And I don't want to say wrong. <laughs> it can go to a place that you're not expecting very quickly. So, um, so it's called chelation, and when you chelate things with all these different substances, it will actually go in and pull the heavy metals out of the stored places. There is only one substance that I know that will pull the heavy metals out of the stored places and then take them out of the body immediately. With other things, you run the risk of your body 
restoring it in another area. And that area might be worse. So a lot of times heavy metals will get stored in our fat tissues, like around our midsection. So this is one way that heavy metals can make people overweight. So if we've got a lot of heavy, heavy metals, our bodies are just so amazing. And that's the other thing that I've learned through my past six months is our bodies are so intensely amazing at protecting us and keeping us healthy. <laughs> I don't even know if, if, they, if it wasn't, they weren't so amazing, we'd all be dead because we just abuse our bodies horribly. Anyways, so let's say you've stored all these heavy metals in your fat tissue, which is if you're heavy and you're one of those people who just never can lose it, and you try and try and try, it might be there because you've got heavy metals stored in your fat tissues and your body is saying, we're not letting this go because if we do, <laughs> the heavy metals are going to go somewhere else. So let's say you do a chelator and the chelator pulls the heavy metals out of your fat tissue, but then puts the heavy metals in your brain. Then you have brain inflammation. And what is brain inflammation? Learning disabilities, ADD, autism, Alzheimer's, dementia. Then you have a much worse situation than being overweight. Okay. So this is the problem with chelators. So I've known this. Now, if you don't know my story, it's a very long story, I, and I'm not going to go into all of it, but if you want to read it, you can read it in my book, From Sick to Sexy. I go through the whole thing. I'll give you a brief overview. My Western medicine diagnoses are, I'm going to try not to cry when I get to the baby part, but ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I've had eight miscarriages and two late-term stillbirths. Baby Max was born an angel at 39 weeks. That's a baby. And baby Noah was born an angel at 37 weeks. That's a baby. Okay, continue. So it's a very long story, but I've been able to figure out what was going on and through diet and lifestyle modifications, make it all go away. And it's been really fantastic, amazing, and wonderful. The problem that I have run into is I can't get past stage two of the GAPS protocol. My body just can't do it. I start entering things in no matter what I do. If I start eating too much fiber of anything, so vegetables, you know, sweet potatoes, anything like that, if I eat it, um, I don't really have any stool or thyroid problems anymore, but I will get joint pain. What those things do is those things feed the bad bugs and the bad bugs feed the candida. And um, that is what causes a lot of my joint pain. Everyone has it a little bit differently, but what I have found in working with people and myself that most people's joint pain is actually a candida overgrowth. Okay. So I've been very strong and very healthy and very good for many years now at this point. Um, at least since 2015, probably. So that's a long time. So I felt strong enough and I knew because of these lines and I knew because I can't get past phase two of the GAPS nutritional protocol successfully that the source of my problems was coming from heavy metals. And I also knew that was because I had injected myself with heavy metals, not knowing that it would cause rheumatoid arthritis, okay? So if you read my book, I explain the whole thing. But I had an injection that contained mercury and um, aluminum that I thought was going to help me be more healthy. Um, and in reality, I actually got really sick with what I was trying to be more healthy from. And shortly after that, all my joint pain started. I'd never had any of it before. And then shortly after that, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And then I look at the side effects of this thing. And oh, my dear goodness gracious, it's listed as a side effect. So I knew that metals were a huge problem. But I also knew that it can be very difficult and very dangerous to detox the heavy metals. And you can make the whole situation much worse. And I didn't want to do that. So I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited until I got stronger, 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 stronger. And I felt very strong and I was like, okay, I wanna go in and do this. And I had found something that would not allow the metals to redistribute somewhere else, that literally bound the meadows and pulled it out. And I was very excited about that. So I started 
And when you do this protocol, which I'm not going to um, explain what it is or anything, just right here, but I do with, sometimes with my clients if they need to, um, you start with a very little bit, very little bit, very, 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 very like the tip of a toothpick little bit, and then slowly build up. And I started doing it, and I actually started feeling amazing. I had more energy. My uh, brain was more clear. Like, it was great. I was so excited. And I just kept going slow, even though I was like, I got to down all of this. I didn't. I made a fatal flaw, and I'm going to share that with you. I screwed up two of the little spoons. So I was taking a small amount, and then I'm supposed to go up to this other little spoon, and I flipped the spoons around and did a week at twice the dose I was supposed to be taking. And I didn't realize it. <sighs> so I um, woke up one morning. I had started to feel pressure. So when you have, how do I say this? So when you have the heavy metal toxicity, your whole microbiome becomes toxic, but you can control it and work with it. Now, if you start to take the metals out, such as I did, that toxic microbiome is still there and you have to go slow so that the toxic microbiome becomes non-toxic and good again. And then you have to be going through all the parts to help recreate the good microbiome without the metals. And I was doing that, except for then I did the wrong amount. So I, I was feeling pressure. And when you feel pressure, that is yeast, candida, fungal overgrowth, building up in your body. All right. And I know all of this. <laughs> and I, while doing this, I was working, I am working with my mentor to make sure, because I had never done it myself and I wanted to make sure that I was going through this properly and I wasn't going to create more problems than um, trying to fix the problem. So I started to feel the pressure and it wasn't that bad. And then a couple days later, it was more pressure. And then one morning I woke up with contractures in my hands. So this is a symptom that is often seen with autistic children. So they will have contractures in their hands and their feet and they'll do like high toe walking. This is yeast. And one of the blessings that God has bestowed upon me is really understanding where these symptoms are coming from. And it is the yeast in your body that is overgrown. But anyways, so contractures are when your hands, you, I woke up in the morning, my hands were like this. I couldn't open them. <laughs> it was horrible. So I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? That was the beginning of it. I don't want to bore you with the full long story, but that's where it started. So I was in contractures. Some days I would be able to get them a little more open, a little more open. Some days they just stayed. Um, then I started to have swelling in my knees, uh, my right knee, then my left knee. The swelling in my knees was to the point where I couldn't bend them. Um, very difficult to go to the restroom if you cannot bend your knees. All right. But it was, it, it was swelling and pressure. That's all I can say. Down through my calves, all the way through my ankles. Um, so I started doing things to try and pull the yeasts out of my joints, out of my other tissues, um, things like coffee enemas, Epsom salts, detox baths, um, all sorts of stuff I was doing to try and pull it out through my skin because I didn't want my liver to have to deal with it. So I was trying to help by pushing it out through my skin or pulling it out through, through my skin. Well, I did that for a while. I was using... Um, activated charcoal to try and pull it out, tons of stuff. And I think it was helping, but I, I was still, I mean, at a certain point when you're so swollen, you just can't walk anymore. <laughs> I would wake up in the morning and trying to step was like stepping on um, swords or daggers coming up through the score, store, the floor just to get to the bathroom. And then I would get to the bathroom and I'm not able to bend my knees to get up and down. It was so bad. My husband in our bathroom has put up one of those um, bars to help you get up and down because I couldn't get up and down out of the bathtub. I couldn't get up and down off the toilet. It was bad. 
So um, I started to pull it out through my skin. Well, if anyone here has had <laughs> toxins coming out through their skin, it turns into a horrific rash. And it felt like then I had acid coming out of my skin, <laughs> literally acid coming out of my skin. I've never had acid on my skin, but this is what I would think it would feel like. And it was very itchy and I'm itching right now, just thinking about it. So it started coming out of my feet, and my ankles, and my calves, and my knees. It's basically come all the way up to through the top of my body, out my hands, and everything. I still have this rash. I started with this rash probably in October. Um, so I've had this rash since October. And, you know, if you look at it, it's a typical candida rash. That's the only way. It's like the red little bumps all over, except for it's really bad. Now, I am grateful that it's coming out through my skin rather than staying inside of my body, but it's there. Uh, so those were the symptoms that I was having, and I was doing everything I could to get rid of the candida overgrowth. So let me try and explain how that happens. So you have the heavy metals. The heavy metals attract parasites. The parasites attract bad bacteria, and the bad bacteria attracts fungus and yeasts. The fungus and yeast, like I said, are what, in my experience, are actually causing the pain. Now, the, what I was having is not the same pain that I had from rheumatoid arthritis. And I've tried to explain, this is not just the rheumatoid arthritis coming back. This is like a whole level <laughs> different than that. It's not just when I would have the rheumatoid arthritis pain, it would be like I would wake up in the middle of the night one joint would be extraordinarily exploded and painful and hot and red, and then it would calm down like the next day or the next morning. Or rheumatoid arthritis is pain and inflammation in my hands, pain and inflammation in my feet. This was this is like inflamed and not stopping. So this is <laughs> this is an in, an infection overgrowth of candida basically. So, like I said, as you pull the metals out, you're left with all these toxic bugs. And, um, yeah, so I was left with all these toxic bugs as the metals came out. Now, of course, I did stop the thing that I was doing to pull the metals out, but this thing takes three months to stop. So I had three more months of my body pushing the metals out. And oftentimes, once your body gets opened up and ready to detox things, it just keeps going because it knows these things are bad and it wants to get these things out. Again, our body wants us to be healthy. So it's been a struggle. Fortunately, it is slowly calming down. Slowly and painfully calming down. I still have swelling in my hands and I still have swelling in my ankles and my feet. I still, I can't stand very long um, because what happens is the fluid from the candida overgrowth drains down into my feet and then my ankles swell up. Now, it doesn't feel like I'm stepping on swords or daggers anymore. I can, my knees are pretty much fine. There's a little bit of swelling in there, but I can get up and down off the toilet and, you know, up and down off the bed and things like that. Whereas before I couldn't, it was, it was a disaster. My hands, I don't know if you can see them. You can see like this one, see how it has this bump here. So that's inflammation and see how I can't quite straighten it. Actually, I'm doing pretty good. This one, um, I can straighten it all the way now, but if you look at it, you can see, and then you can see my rash. So these are the little bumps. If anyone's ever had this, a lot of people get this, they don't know what's going on. Um, it is, um, it's a candida rash. It's, it's a fungal, it's, it's coming out of your skin. You've got toxins coming out of your skin. So that is my story. And that is where I'm at. Um, I have literally been probably bedridden since October and not able to walk very much because of the pressure and the buildup in my ankles and my feet. It's getting better. Um, and I can do more and more and more. Uh, my husband is still really doing the bulk of the load, um, but I am able to take on more and more things. Um, and I figured out ways where I can chop vegetables sitting down with my legs up and all sorts of stuff. But that's where I'm at right now. And that's what's happened. So it's not 
um, a lot of people are thinking, oh my God, you got sick again. No, <laughs> I've actually started getting healthier by pulling out the metals, but now I'm left with all this garbage because I screwed up, basically is what has happened. And now I'm learning how to deal with this. And so we're all going to learn from it. Um, it Number one, if you're going to do a heavy metal, the lessons that I've learned, number one, if you're going to do a heavy metal detox, do not take this on on your own. You need to be working with someone and know before you get into doing this heavy metal detox that it's not just taking the metals out. You're literally having to reestablish your entire microbiome. And if you're not on top of it, don't do it. Just deal with it the way you are. Some very easy ways, if you can tolerate juicing, doing like a GAPS shake, one of the things in GAPS shakes is um, raw eggs and egg whites will actually start to pull heavy metals out of your body and take it out through your stool. So they won't redistribute somewhere else in your body. But if you are going to do a heavy metal detox, it is no joke. Having heavy metals in your body is no joke. I would do in any way you can look at anything around your body that has anywhere near heavy metals anything from your lipstick to your silver fillings and just get it out of your life. Um, because you know, the, the other, Oh, one thing I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here. One thing, another way to really start gently dealing with the metals is rebalancing your minerals. And this is one of the things I always work with, with my clients. They don't necessarily quite get the whole situation, but hopefully by me making this video, they're going to understand it more is as you balance your minerals, because the minerals can interchange with the metals, the minerals will then come in and start pushing the metals out. So that is one gentle way. So the two easy gentle ways to get rid of heavy metals, I would say is mineral balancing, and that you can test for through hair tissue mineral analysis. The other gentle way is through GAPS shakes that has the raw egg yolk in it because the juice will pull out and the uh, help to cleanse the liver and make it so that you can get the metals out. And the egg whites literally pull heavy metals out of your tissues. So those are the two gentle ways to do it. There are other things that you can do, but I'm not even gonna mention them here because you need to be working with someone to do them. And if you're not working with someone, I do not recommend doing it. Okay. And then hair tissue mineral analysis, you kind of have to have someone, you have to know what you're doing to do it or else you don't know how to read the results. So that's the other thing. That is my story and that is where I am. And I will now keep you up to date with my progress. So that's why you haven't seen any exercise videos on the beach of me lately because I can't walk. <laughs> the other thing that I've done though is I've made a whole bedridden workout. So as soon as I can walk more, or get around more or don't look like such a mess with you know the rash all over me um, I am going to share that with you because I think it's very valuable whether you are a person who has joint pain for whatever reason and can't really get around um, and are bedridden that you can do it on the bed or if you're a trainer working with people um, this is a really good protocol to use with your clients that are having issues all right what I am going to do, though, is, oh, I need to share with you how um, I am really all over the place now. So that is my story. If you have questions about my story, let me know. What I need to do is share with you how this correlates with joint pain. It is my experience that joint pain, one of the main things is, or two of the main things, one, the metals get stored in your joints in your cartilage, in your ligaments, and in your muscles. And then your body sees these metals as foreign objects and sends your immune system to go and attack the metals. Okay, so that is one way that you can get joint pain, is the metals actually go into your joints and then your body, they're not really attacking your joints, they're attacking the metals that are there. The other way is the candida overgrowth or the fungus and yeast overgrowth that happens because of the metals. And that clearly was a huge part of what was going on with me. Because if I pull these metals out and I have this much yeast overgrowth that can take over like this, that's a lot of yeast, you guys. And I have been, I haven't had a lick of sugar since 2012. 
So these yeast are just feeding off from the metals. All right. So it's quite crazy. So those are the two things that I've learned about joint pain and heavy metals and yeast. Next week, I'm going to go through all of dealing with candida because it is a problem. And for some people, you're going to need to deal with the candida while you deal with the metals. I just don't see how someone like myself is going to be able to get away with getting the metals out without dealing with the candida. And the other thing to remember is if you know you have a candida overgrowth, you probably have heavy, heavy metals stored somewhere in your body that that candida is living off from. And that stored metals could be in your mouth from your amalgam fillings, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. It's just the way it is, kids. But now I wanted to share with you real quick some of the things, supplements, and well, not just supplements, but foods that help with candida and help with heavy metals. So I already showed you this one. This is the Mega Metalli IQ, Metalli Q, IQ, Q. I'm not sure exactly how it is. It just came out. And this is the one that has the good bacteria in it that will pull the metals, the arsenic, the lead, and the cadmium out of your gut. It will not pull it out of your stored tissues, but if it comes in through what you're eating, this one will take it out. Restore Flora. This particular probiotic has Saccharomyces boulardii in it and the bacillus spores. This is very, very good for not only thyroid issues, but for yeast overgrowth. This one, the Mega IgG 2000. This binds toxins, all kinds of toxins, all kinds of lipopolysaccharides up and pulls it out in your stool, okay? This one at a therapeutic dose, you can actually take up to five times a day for a couple of weeks. Do note that you can start to get a little constipated, so you gotta be drinking a ton of water if you're gonna take that much of this. And the piece, the resistance, that I found to be very helpful, is this mega microbalance okay this has um, uh, B propolis in it um, and what is the other one I forget already now do to do, do oh undiceline acid and I may say have said that wrong but it has undiceline acid and B propolis in it and I'm going to talk about this next week. This is the thing that actually really started to help me turn around. So this is a candida fungal balancer. Let's just call it that. All these other things too, but this, um, this it, I felt the difference after one little uh, capsule of it. Um, what it does is it goes in, so this, these candidas, these yeasts, will actually dig roots into our body. So you can do all sorts of things, and it will pull out the top layer of the yeasts, but the yeasts are still growing. So like in our intestinal tract, um, they will dig roots into our epithelial cells. It digs roots all over our body. What this little guy does is it uproots the roots, and it gets it down at the root and pulls it out that way. Again, you have to go very slow because die-off. Basically what I'm experiencing is candida die-off. If I want to summarize it, very heavy metal detox and candida die off. It's a party. But so as it dies off, again, your body, you're going to try and get it out through your stool as much as you can, but your liver is going to still have to detoxify it. It's got to go through your liver, your, you know, everywhere it's going to come through. Um, so you got to go slow. So I started with one capsule and I'm now up to four capsules and I believe I need to get up to six capsules. So I'm over halfway there. And from the time I started this till now, I mean, it is a huge difference. So I have nothing but grateful praise for this. And do understand, um, I tried everything else that I knew in my bag to try and deal with the candida overgrowth. And it just, um, it was slowly getting better, but really slow. And when I started this, it changed it very quickly. So if that's not a commercial for it, I don't know what is. Again. I am doing this very specifically planned out, dealing, you know, with particular protocols with making this better, um, and it is working. The other things that are not um, 
supplements um, that have been very helpful are garlic. So one clove of raw garlic per day. I either mix it in with my cream kefir um, or I put it in with like a soup or on top of some like an egg omelet type thing. That's none of those things can be very hot. You need it to be um, crushed and raw garlic and you let it sit for five to 10 minutes before you use it. That releases the allicin and the allicin kills off um, candida for sure. Other bugs, but it kills off yeasts and candida and it's working really well. And then the powder arco tea has been extremely helpful in cutting the pain and um, getting rid of the yeast. Again, it's very slow, and I did a whole video on that uh, for that one. So those are the things that have been working to help. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, it's sucking. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's my summary of the situation. But I am getting better, and I do feel at the end of it, I'm actually going to be way healthier than I was even before. And I've already started to introduce foods into my diet that I wasn't able to tolerate before. And I'm slowly continuing to do that because remember the diversity of our foods are going to build up the diversity of our microbiome. So as I'm killing off these bad bugs and this bad yeast, I'm trying to um, diversify my microbiome with the foods that I'm eating and with other things. Um, I'm able now to get down outside and I'm up to sitting for 35 minutes a day in the sun to make sure that I have plenty of sun exposure. Because once you get in one of these situations, if you've ever been sick like this, you can't get out of bed. So you can't get outside. You can't do your normal exercise. You can't do all these other things that you normally did to keep you healthy. And then it just starts to spiral downward. And you have to just, wherever you are, pick yourself up and do the best you can. And I, I really just turned it over to the universe, to God, whatever you want to call it. And I literally said, like, if you want me here, fix this mess and I'll do whatever it is that I'm here to do. And if I'm done, just take me. I'm just, I've been, it was, it was really horrible. Fortunately, it's, <laughs> I'm certainly not, you know, super well, but I am doing so, so, so much better than I was. And I'm really excited to see even how much more healthier I can get after this all goes away. And I'm really looking forward to stop itching because I am tired of itching. But again, the itching is the bad stuff coming out through my skin. And I honestly would rather have it coming up through my skin than having my liver and everything else get all clogged up and have to put stress on that. So I think that's it. Yeah, I see no questions. So I won't answer any. If you do have any questions, type them in there. And if you watch this later, put them in the comments. I am really trying to get in. And because my hands have been swollen, I haven't been able to type very much. So that's also slowed me down with even doing these types of things. But I can type uh, more now. I still can't do very much. I'm also avoiding the computer because there's mercury inside of the keyboard. So <laughs> the last thing I need is more, um, more metals in my body. Um, so next week we're going to do candida overgrowth and talk about different ways, what it does, um, and different ways to deal with it, um, that you can do through food, but also through supplements. If any of this is interesting to you, um, what you can do is in the description, um, my joint pain eliminator program is there. You can click on the joint pain eliminator program and all the things I talked about today and all the supplements I talked about and all the food I talked about. That is all part of the program that I use in working with people. So if you're wondering, what the heck does this woman do? I totally do neuromuscular retraining. I am still working with people on Zoom. I have a full load of clients and have maintained my full load of amazing clients and brought in new clients from across the globe, which has just been so rewarding because if you've ever been stuck at home for a long period of time and can't go anywhere or do anything, um, it can be not very fun. So I love seeing my clients. They make me so happy. And um, this experience has really just brought me closer to them and closer to me understanding people who are struggling with these issues, because this is a whole level of not being able to leave the house that I've never experienced before. So all these things are in my joint pain eliminator program. You can download that starter kit. The starter kit will put you on, if you download the starter kit, it'll put you on our email newsletter. 
So I'm sending out my email newsletter once a week with information about the lives and then other information that you may want that I can't talk about here, um, unfortunately, but that's how it is right now. And then you can subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. If you know someone who's having these problems and think could benefit from this type of information, please share the video with them. Um, I'm sure, you know, for people that are in this situation, this information is really valuable. Um, and then comment below, was this interesting to you? Did, are there any parts of it that you, you know, were just floored that you didn't know about? I actually spoke with one of my clients earlier this week and she was able to share the weight issues video with her husband and her husband was absolutely amazed at how the just one pound of weight created four pounds of pressure on the knees and how, you know, impactful that is to our bodies over time with joint pain. So if, if there was anything like that, a lot of what I share with you, of course, I find to be crazy. You know, when I started through this, I did not know that there could possibly be this much candida in my system. But let me tell you, there is a lot of candida living in my system. Oh, so much. I didn't even mention all the symptoms I had. That's just the ones that came off the top of my head, but that's plenty. All right. We're at an hour and 16 minutes. I've gone on and on and on. I love you all. Yeah. Let me know your questions, comments, or concerns. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week for Candida. All right. Aloha.